Hello, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I'm Zeke, also known as Mike Zielinski. Back with us is Scott Hunsinger, uh, the general manager of the Reading Fightin' Phils. Uh, in our first show, uh, we talked a little bit, uh, a lot about uh, the 50th anniversary season that you had, the 50 years of affiliation with the Philadelphia Phillies, mm -hmm. the longest running in baseball, and all the special promotions. But uh, I want to talk like a little overview. I mean, this is an unbelievable franchise. Uh, the on-field product is amazing it is, as it has been with championships and tremendous amount of players throughout the years. The, uh, it's a family fun entertainment, and it's an adult entertainment. You have ball games, but you have all kinds of live music and attractions and things for kids to do. Uh, and it's true that some people come to your ballpark don't even see the game, right? Or care? <laughs> Certainly. We're happy with that. Yeah. That's fine, too. Whatever you want to do. How However do you, you want a fan, that's fine. How do you characterize your business? Are, well, you, I mean, I, I are mean, you in the entertainment business? 100% entertainment business. Yeah. We just happen to have an amazing palette to paint on because yeah. we have this beautiful ballpark that yeah. Craig Stein, thankfully, has invested in and made better and better and better. And we have this beautiful affiliation with the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about that's both great, but then we throw all the other stuff on the. Have perfect. you ever thought about even when the team's on the road, just open up the ballpark and having all the events? Sure. I mean the music. Yeah, and, and we've uh, done more and more and more of that, and you know yeah. people probably don't even realize how much goes on. Uh, autism walks and touch a truck events, and you know if you come by the ballpark, there's yeah. probably something going on. It's just unless you're organization is the one doing it, you know, you, you probably don't hear it as much because we kind of let those organizations self-promote their own, you know, And you event. do a lot in the community. You're very involved in community health organizations. Thank you. Good yes. citizens. Thank you. I mean, that's been a part of who we are. We live here. We're from here. Um, we have 23 full-time people, 19 of us, uh, as I mentioned in your last show, were interns here, me included. You don't get free agents. You have a feeder system. You know, we have had system. free agents, yeah. and, and you know, it's interesting. Yeah. I always feel bad. I, I don't want the people to misconstrue the other four people as, as like, <laughs> yeah, the bad people. You know? so we have a groundskeeper. Uh, there was no such thing. Dirt as ground, Douglas. There was yeah. no such thing as groundskeeping, so there could be no internship. Uh, Dirt's been there 26 years, so he predates me. We have uh, Chris Haver, our controller. Um, and, you know, really that was, a, that's a growing part of our business as well. And Deneen Geeson, whose husband was our trainer at one point. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So Chris right. and Deneen head up our financial you know, accounting department. We probably could have interns take those jobs now, but at the time that was a new thing. And same with Andy Kaufman, who's sort of in your industry, yeah. uh, who was a TV reporter. Yeah, there weren't yeah. million dollar video boards until we got one. Yeah. And so we had, well, there was no such thing as a video board intern. So the four people that weren't interns. That's right, were, you guys were one of the first ones to really have a cool video board in yeah. the minor league level, yeah. swimming pool. Yeah. Tell us, and you have all kinds of concerts going on during games, right? Yeah, so we have live music at every game. Um, pre-game at every game, post-game at many games. Um, and, you know, there's so much good music, music around Berks County. It's incredible. It is. And we have these great relationships with all these artists. Kind of created its own little kind of mini chamber of commerce feel where the artists almost like suggest to us other artists that we should mix in. And uh, it's become a really neat. Todd Unsker actually heads up that whole musical department. He's a member of the mascot band, so he kind of gets it. He's also your brother. Right? Yeah, and he's the acoustic <laughs> carrot. But uh, yeah, so we we have uh, we have a really cool live music thing going on, and we've got you know. You're in that Brooks Jazz mascot. Fest concert. I mean, yeah. uh, people, artists who are in the Brooks Jazz Fest will also be doing a concert. April seventh, yeah. uh, our opening night, we'll have Eric Koala and the Uptown Band, and then they're gonna have the Brooks Jazz Fest All Stars kind of come and over. Some of those guys are gonna, are gonna be you know, national artists. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know on the March 31st game, uh, we're gonna have Gerald Veasley playing the national anthem, and then at the He's April a big 7th, sports fan. He's also yeah, one of the yeah, greatest yeah. bassists in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, the level of music that takes place at our stadium is not something that we talk about very much. We also necessarily don't feel comfortable talking about it because we don't want to sound in any way, shape, or form braggadocious, like we know more about music than the right, true right. music. But the reality of the situation is if you only analyze the music that takes place yeah. at that ballpark. I saw I Bob Dylan really there. Surprised. Now, that wasn't at a, you guys didn't have a game that yeah. night, but Bob yeah. Dylan. But even just on a nightly basis, yeah. I mean, the David Cullens of the world, I mean, yeah. you, just, you have some really great music taking place. So. And you have so many things for kids to do. Well, you know, when I first came to the Fightins, 
1992 uh, as an, an unpaid intern who was, you know, graduating from Albury College. And you played ball at Albury. I played yeah. Albury baseball and football a little bit. And, uh, you know, I really honestly just did it because Mark Wallace uh, was uh, a professor of our t administrative type person for me at Albright and I can't Oh was he? Yeah he was yeah. he was the SID at Albright when I was on the sports teams and he traveled with us for baseball to Florida and he was on the football field. He was actually my J V football coach at Albright. Mark was. So I had to go wow. and uh, follow someone for a day in the field and I went and observed Mark and he called me like three days later and said, Hey we don't have an intern. Back then there were six full time people and one intern. I was the one intern. Uh, now we have twenty three full time people. We probably have more than twenty three interns. Um, so it, it, it certainly has evolved, but that's how I ended up getting involved. And now Mark still did you know, Mark tell you that you know during home stands you would have like eighteen hour days? Yeah, you know, because um, <laughs> you guys work a full maybe, office shift yeah, and you work the whole it's night. It's totally yeah. it's yeah. it's 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 a way of life. Yeah, you know it what is. I mean, it's yeah. and um, I don't say that in any way like yeah. oh we work both ways up. I go to a ballpark for a hundred hours in a week. You know what yeah. I mean? So and my, I have three sons. And they come and play wiffle ball on the field while That's I'm awesome. working. You know, yeah. so I mean, I think I, um, my father-in-law, my father, and actually our manager Dusty Wathen, who has four kids, have all kind of told me like, and I, and I tell this to my whole staff. This isn't like me preaching to myself. You know, it's like uh, we're lucky enough to work here. We're also here a lot. Uh, it's sort of intrinsic to the, the, right, the job. Right. Well, you might as well enjoy that. You know, you might as well have your family there. You know, I'm lucky. My brother works in our front office. My father has changed up the turtle. You know, my three I forgot sons, that. Yeah, that's my right. dad's yeah. a turtle. You know, my <laughs> my three sons are always there, and and that's just my story. You know, yeah. Kevin Sklenerk, who's one of our executive directors, his son's a bat boy. Now he's playing baseball at Wilson. You know, so each Mike Robinson, who's another executive yeah. director, he all his children work at the ballpark. You know, but forgetting front office, like just the main concession stand. We have we have over 150 game staff employees that have been there more than 10 years. Yeah, I, you and see that's the same faces. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the main concession stand, we have a grandmother, daughter, and grandchildren all in the same concession stand. So people come and observe us, and they say, "Why do the people that serve the hot dogs actually seem like they care?" It's like they do. It's grandma. It really mom is a family. You know, so, say it's family entertainment. Yeah, it's, it's a family a, atmosphere through and through. It's a totally different uh, yeah. environment, and it was like that before I got there. You know, it's really my job to just kind of keep that going and celebrate that. And you have a concourse. I don't know. What do you call it? Sort of a walk of fame or yeah. you know, a history walk. I think. Yeah, and you have all kinds of things for kids to do. You know. Yeah, I mean, the idea is this: like, uh, if we just sold tickets to men that like baseball. We would attract the crowds that came before Craig's time. I remember. I remember those crowds. Uh, yeah. You know, so so uh, you know Chuck Domino and Craig Stein, um, you know, who sort of taught me how to do this. Yeah. You know, realized long ago those people are going to come. You yeah. know, what I mean, it's really the other people that the people that would like live music, or the people that have three kids that would enjoy the mascots. Right. You know, or people that just want a, an affordable night out, so mom doesn't have to cook dinner and do dishes. Right. Like my exactly. wife just doesn't want to do. We don't. She doesn't even want to like have food delivered because then there's trash. So, <laughs> so we can keep. We do our own food so people can eat at our stadium. They can get a good meal at a good price. Um, and that, you know, it's, that's all part of the mix. Right? Yeah. Now, uh, you had a tough act to follow. I mean, uh, Craig Stein, and you were the assistant GM, and, and uh, Chuck Domino was a longtime GM. Yep. And, and you did a lot of pressure on you, but to continue the legacy? Different ways to look at yeah. it. I mean, Chuck's still a part of our franchise. He's a resource for me every yeah. day. Just spoke to him today before I came here. Yeah. Uh, Craig Stein obviously still owns the franchise. Um, you know, one of, one of my greatest, you know, I think, things I'm most proud of is Chuck won executive director in his last year, and I won, I'm sorry, Chuck won uh, executive of the year for our league his last year, and I, I won executive that. of yeah. the league for my first year. And um, I wouldn't want to go anywhere other than the best place, and I wouldn't want to follow anyone but the best guy. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, who wants a reclamation project? I would rather have the challenge of taking somebody that's, I mean, Chuck is widely regarded, and Craig as, you know, the two of the very best ever in our industry. Yeah. Following them was easy. I yeah. mean, they, they, they primed the pump for us to do all the things yeah. we've done since then. So, you know, I, those guys are great friends and, you know, tremendous assets still to our organization. Uh, we're, we're running almost out of yep. time, but real quickly, when you changed to the Fightins, Fightin' Phil's a few years ago, 
Was that a risk at all? Was sure. it a ma marketing uh, ribbon or what well, was I mean, it? I mean, we could probably do a separate show all yeah. about that, but the reality of the situation to kind of put it in a nutshell is we did not take that lightly. We yeah. did not do that to sell more merchandise. Okay. I mean, that would have been so short-sighted relative to the 50-year history of this franchise. Right, right. Uh, there's a whole myriad of good reasons to do it, but to summarize it in two quick ways. Number one, we felt like this franchise deserved to be known as more than the Little Phillies. And they that were the did. Little Phillies in the they paper. Were. And that's fine, years. and yeah, we respect yeah. our relationship with the Phillies tremendously, yeah. but we felt like the, the people of this franchise sort of earned their own moniker, their own name, their own identity. Yeah, I get it. Contextually, it matches the Phillies because we're the Fightins. Yeah. The other thing is... You're officially the Fightin' Phillies. Fightin' Phillies, and we fight go fight. by Fightins. But one last yeah. story to kind of like try to wrap up. Met a gentleman, this guy represents other people, who moved here from, from the New York area. His children fell in love with our team. He could not bring himself to purchase them a hat. Not because we wanted to sell more hats, but their fandom, because he was a Mets fan. Okay. So if I moved to Binghamton, New York, and my kids wanted a Met, Binghamton Mets jersey, right, that would be hard. And yeah. what we came to realize as we looked around is if you love the Iron Pigs, you wear an Iron Pigs jersey. If your dad's a Yankees fan, it's not hurting him. So at the same time, if your dad's a Phillies fan, he's so proud that his sons are following in his lineage. Yeah. So Fightins was sort of a half step to allow those people and the people that love the Phillies to both sort of be able to celebrate their franchise without sort of turning anybody off. Most people call you the Fightins now. Yeah. Great. They can call us the R-Phils. They can call us anything you want. Just come out. All right. I, it's, you can call us anything you want. Scott Hunsaker, thank you very much. Best of luck in this very uh, unique 50th anniversary season. And thank you for taking the time. I know you're busy right now. And uh, check us out next time on The People Chronicle. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Susie Ray Design, Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.